SAS finally ended their strike and I was able to fly out of Tromso. And I decided to stop by uh, the south of Norway to visit Annalene again um, before I went back to Pickle. And we did some more sailing. Peace and love. We're back on Rodeo Jones, and we're gonna sail to this little island, which we're gonna try to camp out if the weather is good. We are weaving our way through these little rock scaries. We have no depth sounder, hoping the Navionics charts are right, and our sails are rough. There's no way we can really get the motor going if we get something. <laughs> Very exciting. So it's a really cool potential anchorage and it's pretty protected. There is some wind, but we're gonna try one more spot but there's probably other boats there. And if there's boats, we'll go back to our own spot. This is gonna jive, so. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Rodeo Jones. Just hit a rack real hard. <laughs> How do you know if we're still fine? Uh, we're, floating? Well, we're still floating. Yeah. Uh, that will just go and motor back onto that little. I mean, we can swing to shore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never hit something that hard. <laughs> I got so scared. Oh my god. <laughs> we just bounced right off of it though. No problem. <laughs> Shoot, I wish we had a mask to go down and look. Okay, so this is gonna come back over again. Oh my gosh, the noise! <laughs> yeah, so Let's take a look down here. That's dry. It's actually completely dry. Oh no. Know. If, if in an hour it's full. <laughs> so I, I, think I think we're good. I think we're good. That was not a good noise, was it? Well, it wasn't. It was scary. Yeah. And was... We, just kept, we just kind of scooted right over it. It was so, so sudden. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it at all. So the island we thought was just a bunch of rocks and maybe we would anchor it turned out to have one of these nice little docks, which is so common in Norway, but it's very nice and just a perfect size for our boat. And here's where we slammed into that rock. Navionics does say it's nine feet deep, so I thought it was okay. Although I did wander uh, maybe 30 feet south of that kind of ideal line there, so I'm kind of to blame. That's a problem when something is normally so reliable you just kind of grow to depend on it and uh, it is definitely you know not always right Oh yes, uh, you can do it. <laughs> not quite, but it'll work. It'll work. Yum, all the deliciousness. Good? <laughs> the jump from that rack to that rack. This one, the, this one right there, yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, do it.
thanks for watching um in the next video i'm gonna post the paragliding stuff i just found this one on my phone and i was just thinking that's kind of always good to share a good running the ground story kind of slam into a rock pretty hard that was one of the, the hardest rocks i i hit before we kind of even like we hit it and then we kind of tilted it over on the side and scooted off across it it was a little frightening we never ran this boat aground plenty of times too that's the good thing about having a nice like full keel boat like mine and annalene's they seem pretty tolerant to hit, hitting a rock or here or there um and if anybody else has any good like stories going aground they're always fun to share so leave them in the comments um also a good point to mention is navionics isn't always right i mean we all know that charts are never perfectly accurate but sometimes they they just seem like they're always so good and always know everything uh and then when they aren't wrong they really tend to bite you in the butt like happened to me also and uh, a few times before i once in cape cod i ran right into a beach <laughs> at night uh because it said it was like almost half a mile you know on the other direction and uh yeah sand obviously shifts around um that that i mean you expect rocks to be you know not move as much so that should have been a little better marked and it, it kind of was it did say rocks awash but also it said eight feet and if you didn't zoom in and click on that little star and see that it said there was rocks awash you wouldn't really know that like i mean it's that we were kind of weaving our way through just kind of going through the seat of our pants so maybe it would have been better to have someone on the front keeping watch in that that scenario in the next video i'll be yes sailing to casa Berga and doing the paragliding and then uh i'm right now i'm in vestervik visiting my friend sven and that'll be another video and then uh maybe maybe tomorrow i'll still start sailing up to stockholm so if anybody is uh in that area and wants to meet up maybe send me an email try to respond maybe we could we could set up a meetup uh yeah so thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video